the data are sent through and you look at them and you think, oh my goodness. I remember thinking at the time that I'm never going to have another moment like that in my entire career. And it was quite clear that we needed to tell the world. Randomised evaluation of COVID therapies, as far as I recall, um, but it's been known as recovery from more or less day one. Um, and it summarises quite neatly what we were trying to do way back in uh, March 2020. It's hard in retrospect to think back that far. I ended up being a um, blue light aid to hospital um, in an ambulance. I, I genuinely did believe that at certain points within, within that week, um, particularly on day two, that I, I, I thought I was dying. We were stretched beyond imagination. There's nothing worse than, as a doctor than feeling hopeless. None of the medics, whilst they were all brilliant, nobody could give me kind of any kind of real guarantees or any predictions because it was all just like kind of their best guess scenario, really. Because at that stage, we knew very little about the virus and nothing about what treatments could work. Randomised trials are essential for finding out the real effects of treatment. And it might take nine months or a year to go from, I've got a good idea, to actually, if you're successful, actually starting that trial. We went from writing the protocol to get the first patient in uh, 10 days later. And I rang people around Oxford and I said, could you do it? I don't mind whether you say yes or no, uh, but you need to answer by the end of this call in 15 minutes. The absolutely important thing for recovery to make it a success was to make it really simple and easy for the people at the front line who were providing care to patients with COVID to do. The trial is integrated in clinical care. It's not an addition. And it had to be rapid in implementation, not cutting corners in finding the answers. That was, that was the definitive thing. You make the study big enough so that if it says, yes, there's an effect, you believe it. And if it says, no, there's not an effect, you're also pretty confident about that. At the peak of the pandemic, there was something like between 10 and 12% of all patients in hospital were in the recovery study. Um, so I think I would have done anything, you know, it, it just, it was research and it might help. A separate group of independent experts said, you better look at the results for this, for dexamethasone. The data are sent through and you look at them and you think, oh my goodness. Such a clear result and, and a drug that's in every hospital cupboard around the world. I mean, it, it was just fantastic. Reaction number two is, we better have got this right. I was very excited, of course I couldn't tell anybody, <laughs> because... There couldn't be a leak, because we wanted to make sure that the results got out clearly. So we phoned the heads of some of the biggest drug regulators around the world. We did the Science Media Centre conference at lunchtime remotely, because everything was remote, uh, and um, it, it was policy across the UK by tea time. So the result were, when dexamethasone came didn't just save life, but it gave the validation of how important research is in answering the uncertainty. I feel like that's the extra thing I can do for my patients and um, uh, it kept me going during the pandemic. There have been estimates uh, that perhaps it, it they, the, this single result has saved a million lives over the, over the subsequent uh, months. I don't know what the number is, nobody knows what the number is, but it's a substantial number of people who would otherwise not have made it out of hospital alive. It's not just about the people here in the University of Oxford. Fantastic though, they, they have been incredibly hardworking, incredibly focused. It's not just about you know, the government and, and health service support. It's not just about the doctors and nurses, it's also about the patient. It, it probably sounds a bit naff, but when you've had a kind of near death experience, you, you do re sort of revisit your priorities and you do kind of want to do things to help. So it's nice to know how it's being used and how they're sort of using the sort of things they learn. Really, honestly, it's made me really think that, you know, it's important to get involved in things like this. Without research, you know, we would have been in a very different position, I think, with COVID.
the pressure to cut corners and just to sort of say it's good enough, I, I know enough, I'm going to go, was huge. And so I think it was a it was a really fantastic global example of how to do proper science in the middle of the most difficult circumstances.